let's talk about the classification of real numbers. This can be tricky. I've drawn myself a little diagram here to get started with so that um, maybe this helps gives you some kind of hierarchical view of how we classify them. So first we need to talk about that real numbers are basically everything that's not an imaginary number. A real number is something we can put on a number line. Imaginary numbers, that's like our I, we can't put that on a number line. Okay, so we're only gonna focus on real numbers. Inside of real numbers, I want you to know there's two categories. One is called irrational numbers. An irrational number is a real number that can't be expressed as a simple fraction. Let me give you an example. The square root of five. Now I know I can get a decimal approximation for the square root of five, but I can't write it as a simple fraction. Therefore, I know that would be an irrational number. Another one would be pi. Now, if you're thinking 3.14 is pi, remember that is the approximation we use. Pi actually is an irrational number because it keeps on going forever into infinity. The square root of seven would also be an irrational number. The natural logarithm base e also would be irrational. The last thing that would be irrational is a decimal that doesn't end. So again, pi is kind of fits into this category, but we could just write one. So let's say we have 0 0.1358 and it keeps on going forever. That would also be an irrational number. Again, I can't take that decimal and I can't make it into a simple fraction. On the other side of irrational numbers are just going to be rational numbers. You should know that we're gonna actually have three more circles inside of this, so I'm gonna add those now. So inside of rational numbers, we have integers, whole numbers, and natural numbers. So again, what this is showing us is that integers are rational numbers, whole numbers are rational numbers, natural numbers, all of these things are considered rational numbers. When it gets tricky is looking at what these natural numbers are and what these more specific areas of rational numbers are. So I think it's easiest to start in the very middle and then work our way out. So natural numbers are all of our normal counting numbers, but not zero. So think of one, two, three, four. So they have to be whole numbers, but they are not including zero. That leads me to whole numbers. Whole numbers are all of our natural numbers, but now we can include zero. Now we get to integers. All whole numbers, all natural numbers are integers, but now we're thinking of positive and negative whole numbers. So things like negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, etc. Now we have to think about all of the other rational numbers that don't fit into these categories. So think about our fractions. Fractions go into rational numbers. Think about our square roots that do end. So the square root of four, for instance, that would be a rational number, it equals two. All of our decimals um, that end, those are rational numbers. However, there's a caveat. We also have numbers that are repeating that are considered rational numbers. So for instance, 0 0.3333333 that goes on forever, that would be considered rational, even though it's a decimal that doesn't end. So just to clarify with decimals, because I feel like this is the trickiest part. For it to be a rational number, the decimal must repeat or it must terminate. Again, if we look at my irrational numbers, this did not repeat and it did not terminate, and I know that because it had those three dots afterwards. I hope this video has given you a better perspective into how we organize our real numbers, the difference of rational versus irrational numbers, and now you've got more clarification on integers, whole numbers, and natural numbers.